Recently, I was browsing on Facebook and creepily enough, it knew that I had purchased an iPad Pro. Now, I actually have friends, side note, I actually have friends that swear by this and they say that Facebook somehow hears what they talk about because they'd be talking about like a product with their friends and next thing you know, they're browsing on Facebook and lo and behold, the product they were just discussing like two minutes ago shows up on their feed. In any case, I was browsing and this product came up and it basically said you could mirror your Mac onto your iPad and I was intrigued, but I did what any reasonable person would do. I called Bull and I closed the window and I never thought about it again. Well, until Black Friday, when the product actually came on sale and it showed up again on my newsfeed. And I was like, hmm, it's on sale now. So I, um, yeah, I bought it. What is up guys? My name is Tassif Hussain and today we're talking about Luna Display. Okay, so just to be clear, before we get started, this video is not sponsored. I didn't even get the product sent over to me and like all my other videos, all thoughts in this video are my own. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Too much Philly D, I've been watching too much Philly D. Okay, so let's talk about how it works. So basically you get this little dongle, which by the way comes in either USB-C or mini display port, depending on what your setup is. You take this little thing and you plug it into the Mac. No, this does not work with the PC, unfortunately. So sorry about that, PC master race. Then you go ahead and you download Luna Display apps on both the Mac and the iPad, and you open them both simultaneously. And ta-da, you've got yourself a second display. Now, as long as your Mac and your iPad are connected through Wi-Fi, the iPad will function as either an extension or a mirror display to your Mac. Now, this is really cool for quite a few reasons. So first, I'm gonna go over some of the features and some of the cool points about it, and then we'll talk about some of the downsides and some things that kind of bothered me a little bit. So let's get into it. Firstly, it is crystal clear with minimal lag. It uses this technology called Liquid, which basically features color corrected output along with retina resolution. So basically what you see on your Mac is what you get on your iPad. Now this actually worked pretty well for me. Uh, there was very minimal lag, especially when you're just using it as an extension to your Mac. When you move the mouse around or anything like that, you don't really see that much of a lag. Secondly, it makes your iPad a complete extension of your Mac, which means you can use external keyboards or even your iPad smart cover, your Apple Pencil, a mouse, or even touch input. Now this is great and it really opened up a lot of opportunities. If you just touch the screen with a single finger, you basically control the mouse. But if you use two fingers, then you're able to use it as touch input. Now, especially if you are a creative, it gives you access to wirelessly use your iPad as a digital drawing device while using the pressure sensitive input from the Apple Pencil. Next is that it allows a lot more versatility with your iPad and you're able to use it as a secondary display, which I found very handy, especially when you're on the go. Here's an example of how I used the iPad Pro as my secondary display with my Mac for Final Cut Pro. I was actually able to use different workspaces, so I just get a lot more uh, screen real estate on each of my displays. Another use case is, let's say you have a Mac setup at home where it's like a desktop setup, or let's say you're like me and you dock your MacBook Pro and you don't really move it too much from there unless you're editing somewhere else. Now, you're able to leave all of that there and take your iPad and mirror that display from your Mac or your MacBook uh, over to your iPad and take your iPad anywhere, basically. Now, in this particular case, I actually have my hard drives and everything plugged in to my MacBook uh, and I'm just able to access all the hard drives and everything else that I need right on the iPad anywhere. I can even use a mouse or a keyboard or anything else that I want as long as your Mac is in Bluetooth distance. And last but not least, you can actually use your iPad Pro as your primary display with a Mac Mini. Now, I haven't done this because I don't own a Mac Mini. However, I'll link Jonathan Morrison's video down below in the description and you can check it out as he explores this option fully. Okay, so now that I've discussed what I like about it, are there any negatives? 100%, yes, there are drawbacks, there are negatives like all other products and pretty much every other product or every other person even. That's deep. Everybody has positives and negatives, yeah. In any case, the biggest negative or the biggest con for me has been uh, audio. 
there is no audio support using Luna Display. So for example, in my case, I wanted to leave my MacBook Pro docked up here with all my hard drives, and I wanna be able to take my iPad Pro downstairs and edit on Final Cut Pro on just the iPad. Um, now this would have been really cool, but I didn't have audio support. However, there is a workaround, and that is if you are in Bluetooth distance from your MacBook or your Mac setup, then you can just use Bluetooth headphones. So I was using AirPods, and they would work well for the most part. However, if I went too far away, then I would lose audio because the Bluetooth connection would just cut out. Another issue I had with it is that it is pretty buggy. Now, for example, if I click on any of the options at the top right corner here, such as, let's say, the audio output, it instantly disconnects my iPad Pro from the Luna display, which is which is weird. Um, which kind of leads me into my next gripe, which is any time it disconnects the screen, it just reboots the whole thing in the sense that I lose all my settings. And last but not least, when there's things that are moving really fast on the screen, then it does this weird pixelating thing. So anytime I try to move something, like for example, check out this Word document that I just scroll up and down furiously, uh, you can see that it pixelates in certain areas. Okay, so all in all, other than the audio issue, which was actually quite disappointing to me, I could live with the rest of the drawbacks. Okay, so who is this product for and would I recommend it to them? Now, given that the price tag for this product is actually pretty high at $80 USD for basically a dongle and some software, um, I would only recommend this product for people in specific need cases. Let's say you're somebody who travels a lot and you carry both your iPad and your Mac with you. Now, this means that you can actually utilize your iPad as a secondary screen, which leads to increased efficiency and added utility. So, I would say it's a good buy for that. Another use case is let's say you're doing hands-on creative work and you're able to benefit from the pressure sensitive Apple Pencil or the touch input on the Mac, then this would be beneficial. And last but not least, let's say you have a Mac and you don't want to, or you can't if it's a desktop Mac, take it around your home, but you wanna be able to use it elsewhere, such as let's say on the couch, then this will allow you to accomplish that because you'll be able to mirror your Mac onto your iPad and you'll be able to take your iPad anywhere around the house. And Added bonus is if you have if you are in Bluetooth distance to your Mac, then you'll be able to use your keyboard, your mouse, and your Bluetooth headphones. However, one thing to keep in mind is that iPads have become so capable nowadays that you're basically able to use it natively for pretty much majority of the things that you wanna do. So this really only comes in handy if you wanna be able to use, let's say your hard drives that are connected to your Mac or you wanna mirror your Mac in order to use pro softwares that are not available on the iPad. Otherwise, it's just a lot more convenient and just a lot more quicker to just use your iPad natively. If you're just browsing or just typing on a Word document or something like that. All in all, if you want to be able to use Mac OS on your iPad or Final Cut Pro on your iPad or use hard drives with your iPad, then this will allow you to do it. I found a use for Luna Display in my workflow and it has helped me thus far. Maybe you can too. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video beneficial or helpful, then make sure you go ahead and crush that like button on the video. If you like content around tech, gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle, then make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be part of Notification Squad. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Mm, it's not fake. Last time I did this, everyone said it was fake. Like, I don't know if you can, oh my God, there's like very little left, yes. But there is, there is something in here. <sighs> okay, let me check my hair first. Excuse me, oh, that tea came out. I tasted a little bit of it. Mm, I love tea though. Dude, I am so sleepy. Brrrr. <sighs>